What's going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. So we've already made a video today discussing this brand new Sugo Fest with uh, Law Kid and Big Mom and the whole other informational pieces that they've released today. But there are some other pieces of information that we didn't touch up on because it would make that video a little bit too long. So in this video, we're going to discuss expansions, level limit breaks, and the new ship upgrade. So let's go ahead and just get kick started because it is going to be a relatively longer video. So we have a new batch of level limit breaks arriving. So we've got uh, four new treasure map free to play characters receiving buffs and two rumble rare recruits. Now, in terms of the rumble rare recruits, I mean, they're not that exciting. We have ores here and uh, he's not really that exciting. I mean, you see, look, th this is his new buffed rumble ability. Never really saw play even when he was out. When he, when he first got released, he never really saw play in. He still isn't really that good. So he gives guard down um, to all enemies, level 5. And then for the first 40 seconds, your int teammates get level 10 crit, level 5 attack. And your free spirit enemies for the first 40 seconds get level 5 attack down. It's a pretty mediocre rumble ability. 18 CT special, you'd think it'd be nice. But you got target one high defense enemy for a 40% health cut. Target one high attack teammate for level 10 attack for 25 seconds. And targets free spirit enemies for defense down level 6. I mean, at an 18 CT, I, I'm just not a big fan of this, you know, especially for an int team. It's already pretty hard to squeeze into those squads to begin with. So I'm not really a big fan of what they've done here. We also have the Sober Mask. Now, this is a character that actually will see play. So let's go ahead and see what they've done in terms of his upgrades. So with his Rumble ability, he now will go ahead and give buffs to Dex, giving them level 6 attack and level 6 speed. I believe it was 5 beforehand. And now Quick Enemies, level 5 defense down. So against Quick, this guy is a monster. He just tears through them. Having a look at that special though, 24 CT is very respectable. It does a medium horizontal 2.2 times attack damage range and then targets enemies in a large horizontal range for 2.5 times damage as well. And as well as targeting quick enemies for 10% special CT delay. So it's cool that they've added that, but I mean, a 10% delay isn't really going to help you that much. Uh, a 10% delay is only a couple of seconds, if that, so... Uh, I think that maybe they could have done something else. A 10% delay is kind of whatever, but it, it might it might prove very useful in the future. I just think that at face value, it just seems kind of average. But if we're going by level limit breaks, the best level limit break Rumble Red Recruit that I've seen thus far has definitely been Rebecca Toy Soldier. They gave her Rumble ability amazing buffs. They made her special so much better as well, targeting more enemies with uh, with more multipliers as well. Just so much better. And uh, what, what they've done with Sober Mask here, he's definitely better for sure. But in terms of upgrades, because remember, this is a level limit break. You need to invest uh, posters or duplicates to get him to this level. I don't know if this guy is going to be a worthwhile investment, so it is what it is. Uh, we'll move on to the treasure map characters here. Let's start us off with, with the worst one, which is going to be Kizaru, and I still don't think this character is going to see a hell of a lot of play. Captain ability beforehand, he was a pretty low attack booster, but also boosted the chain multiplier as well. And then you move on to his, uh, to his special, which would be a 20% health cut, 1.75 attack for three turns for the type that is the same color as the captain. So you can run this guy as your sub, and if you've got like an int captain, his special boost int by 1.75 for three turns. Very odd type of special. And he also locks your slots for one turn. So not a whole lot going on, but let's have a look at his level limit break. With level limit break, his captain ability does a minus two cooldown, and then he is a 3.75 attack to deck sight int, and still gives you the chain boost. And um, it, it's kind of whatever. You're not really going to be using him as a captain, let's be real here. But the special is going to be interesting to see what they've done here. So 20% health cut sets all enemies defense to zero for three turns. That's a pretty nice upgrade. He reduces cooldown by one and boosts attack by 2.25 for three turns with the characters the same type as the captain. That's pretty good, actually. That's a, it's a much better upgrade. 2.25 attack for multiple turns is strong. And it says changes his own slot to dex, locks the crew slots for one turn. I, don't just, I just don't know if this is really going to see play. It just seems a little bit weird. Um, it would have been nice if there was some effect to proc to give him a defense down conditional as well. Would have been amazing. But at face value, I don't think this character is going to see a hell of a lot of play, unfortunately. I think it's a bit of a missed opportunity there. Now, we'll move on to Jack because I was very excited to see what they're going to do with Jack. His captain ability is whatever, but the special ability here, like this is the base special of what he currently does. So he removes blue shield, 
Rainbow Shield and Damage Nullify or Nullify and Damage Nullification, whatever it is, the, the 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 orange shield removes it completely. Those three debuffs by two turns. Then he does damage to one target, ignoring uh, barriers and defense, depending on how many enemies are on the field. So the more enemies that are on the field, he does more single target damage to a character. And that's all he really did. But the fact that he removed two turns of damage nullification was massive because there's not many characters in the game that can actually do that. Now we move on to his level limit break and I was really hoping they were going to give him some massive upgrades and I think that they kind of missed the mark here. So with level limit break, his captain ability is kind of interesting, you know, 4.5 attack to powerhouse and pretty good uh, health boost, but he also allows your crew to avoid blow away. So that's pretty weird to see that on a free to play captain. So there might be some niche circumstances where you actually want that. That's pretty interesting. But then the special ability, he still only removes defense, rainbow shield, and damage nullification by two turns. So they, they haven't even buffed that, which I think would have been huge. Even if they wanted to keep damage nullification at two turns, but make rainbow and blue shield like five or six turns would have been so much better. And then he still does damage to a single target, depending on how many enemies are on the field. But then he has an added effect here where he boosts striker and powerhouse attack, their base attack, based on the amount of enemies on the field. And, um, you know, so you can get uh, up to 1250 base attack if there's six enemies on the field. But then it says that the effect cannot be removed by crew or enemies. So this is a really cool way to synergize with... Uh, versus Kaido versus Kaido has the ability to you know remove your beneficial effects but then apply an attack and an orb boost and as we've seen with the beast pirate legends that synergize with the versus Kaido having those effects that cannot be removed by your own effects or by the enemy are very powerful um, so it's supposed to synergize with that but I think it's a it's a bit of an odd effect to add to this character the main use for this unit was the removal of those defensive effects on the enemy side of the field the damage boosting stuff or the damage that he does with the special negligent you don't care about that we only wanted to see what he could do in terms of removing gimmicks and unfortunately they've missed the mark pretty heavily in my opinion so next we're going to talk about Enaru. so Enaru, i mean when he came out he was used all the time but uh, let's see what they've done here. So the base version of this unit, Captain Ability, only a 2.5 times attack. He does do end of turn damage and gives you a bit of healing. But then the special ability doing 565,600 fixed damage to all enemies and locking your slots for one turn was very powerful because of his crewmate ability that reduces his cooldown by five turns every time another character uses a special. So you could have him as a sub and after you use a few specials, you could just launch him again to wave clear over and over again. So you run a whole bunch of wave clearing effects and then Enaru can be used multiple times throughout a quest. That was the main use of this character or alternatively using him as a captain to wave clear very easy content like mini bosses during treasure map so let's see what they've done here with this kit captain ability now reduces his own cooldown by 10 turns at the start of the quest 4.5 rainbow attack boost recovery tandem and matching and he still does the same end of turn damage and still does the same end of turn healing pretty good update to the captain ability if i do say so myself we move on to the special ability where it says that this special can be charged over its maximum so this is very similar to six plus uh big mom that came out the dual big mom as well as legend nami that have the ability to do that so it, this character he does 565,600 fixed damage to all enemies, locks the slots for one turn. But then if the special charge is over the max is 12, so if it's 12 turns over the cap uh, or more, he then applies a paralysis to all enemies for two turns and gives you a uh, paralysis conditional boost, 2.25 for two turns. So it basically um, incentivizes you to not use his special straight away and you can use it on like a final boss stage to give you a conditional boost. So there's like multiple different modes. You can use him for wave clearing still or alternatively you can save his special to give you a conditional boost if you need that too. So I like that there's different ways to utilize him. I don't think it makes him like an instantly max character. I don't know if he's going to see a lot of play moving forward but it just adds a, like another layer to this character which he, he can still do what he already did amazingly well but then they've added this really cool ability on top of it that might that may actually see play like a 2.25 conditional boost and a very interesting uh, gimmick inflicted to the enemy is pretty cool and finally we have big mom mono powerhouse strength unit this character whew, i'm very excited to talk about this one so captain ability is very weird with this unit if you have one of every color on the crew doubles the crew's attack so two times attack boost but then 
any damaging special that you launch while Big Mom is your captain, the damage from the special is multiplied by three. Now, this doesn't include health cuts, of course. It's only like damage boosting effects or damage dealing effects, should I say. So if, 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 if a special does like, you know, a hundred times characters attack, it actually will do 300 times characters attack. And you could do some pretty crazy mechanics with this. It also reduces uh, all enemies HP by 10% at the end of the turn and heals the crew by two times recovery. So very low attack and stoly type of captain ability, but if you have damage dealing specials, they do a lot more damage under Big Mom. But then the special ability is the most important thing. Removing your beneficial effects changes all slots, including block into G slots, give you a three times orb boost for one turn and gives a 1.25 attack and a 1.25 color affinity for one turn. So while this character has a very interesting effect, it it's, it's just sees a lot of play. It's a good effect. Removing beneficial effects, full board of G slots, which you can then manipulate after the fact into anything you want, but then having the ability to give you a huge orb boost and then a small attack, small affinity boost. This special alone allows you to kill mini bosses, especially with the captain abilities that we have now, reaching up to almost a six times multiplier. If you can abuse this, you can just go crazy just with this special alone, right? because of uh, the fact that the orb boost, attack boost, affinity boost, it's a rainbow boost. It's not specific to classes or colors. Everyone gets this bonus. Even if Big Mom isn't boosted on the team, you can put her on there and you just do a lot of damage. It's a good special. Let's have a look at what, they, what they've done with level limit break. So captain ability now is going to give you a health boost, recovery and assembler slots are gonna be beneficial. If you have every type on the crew, five times attack boost, Hello? Like, uh, upping from two times boost to five times is crazy. And then also says that boosts type damage dealt by specials by 3x. So again, 3x bonus to damage dealing specials. Reduces all enemies health by 10% at the end of the turn. Two times recovery healed at the end of the turn. And then finally, if you tap on this character with a similar slot, then any attack boost on the crew that you have will be buffed up to 2.25. And as we know with what the special does, buffing that to 2.25 is very strong. But then you may be wondering, how the hell are you supposed to get a similar slot? Well, we have a look at this. Removes all beneficial effects, changes all slots, including block into similar, boosts the orbs by 3.25 for one turn, and then you get a slight attack and color affinity boost for one turn. So the fact that you can use her as a captain, you tap on her with a similar slot, the attack boost that she gives with her special is buffed to 2.25. Now you have a 2.25 attack boost and a 3.25 orb boost with this character by herself. You do need to have one of every color on the crew in order to activate that captain ability though. But it's just interesting that you can use it that way. But more importantly, the fact that she now changes all slots, including block into Semla instead of G slots is actually pretty massive. Remember that similar slots are treated like rainbow or like Wano slots in a way where the enemy cannot change them around. So if you can just use her special to give you those similar slots, lock them with another effect, you can just keep these slots for multiple turns, not even have to worry about the enemy switching your slots around. It's very, very interesting. She does also make recovery and similar slots beneficial as a crewmate too, because remember similar slots are not always treated as naturally matching slots. They can be neutral slots. So you do need to make them beneficial. And she does that as a crewmate, which is very strong. So I think that Big Mom is a character you probably want to invest in, but at the same time, sometimes it is actually useful to have um, the G slots because G slots, you can manipulate them into other slots. Whereas if they're similar, you can't change similar slots into anything else. So it is team dependent, but it is still interesting nonetheless that you get access to something such as that. So those are all the brand new level limit breaks. I think Sober Mask is going to be seeing play. I think Big Mom is good. I think Enera is pretty decent too, but the other three of Jack... Borsalino and um, you know and Oz are pretty mediocre. You got some new um, limit break expansions here. You know, Adori getting an expansion is pretty big. It's a very commonly seen character in Pirate Rumble. Definitely would be worthwhile. The other two with Heat and Wire as well as the the Robin, not so much. Probably don't need to worry about those characters all that much. So, you know, a lot to talk about in terms of the brand new level limit breaks added here. And finally, we have the shipyard. So there are going to be three new ships that are receiving buffs in this month. And you can see here we have Baratie, Dreadnought Saber, and the Hoe or the Ho ship is getting a buff. Can you believe it? So let's get talking about the Baratie. Remember that this is the fully buffed version of the ship at level 12. So if you want to invest in it, this is what you get. 10,000 health, 1.5 attack to all characters, boost the chances of landing recovery slots, makes recovery 
and similar slots have matching slot effects. 1.2 attack when you have a recovery or a similar slot. Let me just go ahead and pull up the calculator real quick. I know that a lot of the ships tend to do this. So it's going to be a 1.5 multiplied by 1.2. Uh, it'd be good if I could actually do this properly. So it's a 1.8 bonus if you have a character on the crew with a recovery or assembler slot. Very, very strong. And uh, it says you can obtain recovery and similar slots even if you hit a perfect. So very, very focused around this recovery and similar slot mechanic. As we know, the new Big Mom coming out with Lauren Kid focused around those slots too. And we've got the new Big Mom that's coming out with level limit break also likes the similar slots. Then we have the first special effect. So with modifications, all of your stats to level 4 reduces cooldown by 1 at the start of the quest if you get all the stats to level 5. Changes tandem slots into Semla. This is crazy because this might be the first ship that you actually don't want to get to level 12. Uh, tandem slots are still very, very valuable. Remember, to activate super tandem abilities, you need a tandem slot. And if you're changing them around to a slot that you cannot abuse for super tandem mechanics, then that's just very weird. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it is team dependent, I suppose. I don't think this is a worthwhile mechanic, honestly. I think that keeping the effects at level at level 4 across the board is probably where most people are going to leave it. So, Baratia is a very, very odd one. The next one, the Dreadnought Saber. This is a very nice ship. It does end of turn damage, allows you to get around resilience, but the problem with that ship is that the Dreadnought Saber would never give you an attack boost. It would not give you any boost to attack at all. And that was the big drawback of the ship. But being able to get around resilience was pretty strong. So let's see what they're doing with this ship. First of all, 1.5 HP, boost driven and powerhouse attack by 1.4. So they've now given those two classes an attack boost. I love that they're doing that. So, oh man, that, that's amazing. Boost damage dealt to enemies afflicted with a poison, venom, or progressive poison by 1.2. Hold the phone. Okay, so 1.4 multiplied by 1.2, a 1.68 times ship if you have you know, powerhouse driven characters, as well as inflicting poise, a poison effect to the enemy. That's pretty cool. But at the same time, <laughs> the ship is mainly used to get around resilience effects and poison actually gets around resilience effects. So that seems a little bit weird to me. I think that's uh, not a very good design decision. Of course, if there's immunity, you can't use poison to do that, but still. Uh, it does 20,000 non-type damage to all enemies at the end of the turn. That's the biggest component of the ship. There aren't many ships that can do end of turn damage. And uh, I think the other one is that other Capone ship, which is very hard to build teams for. But the fact that you have this now, which is like a rainbow driven powerhouse ship to give you end of turn damage is very strong. Very, very good. If you get all the effects to level four, remove one turn of paralysis, dude. That is so good. Removing one turn of paralysis anytime you're inflicted with it is great. And special effect 2, boost driven and powerhouse attack by 200. So it gives them a bit of a stat boosting effect as well. So the level four, uh, the level 5 special effect level 2 is whatever. It's, it, it's okay. But the, the first effect of removing paralysis, you definitely would want to get that. That's very, very good. But now we get to the time where we could talk about the... The most one of the most anticipated ships to receive a buff which is the ho ship the hoe i don't even know the way to pronounce it the ho ship let's see what they've got in store so minus one cooldown at level 12 remember this is the fully charged effect level 12 minus one cooldown at the start of the quest boosting the cruise attack by 1.65 1.65 bonus ship now makes it easier to land perfect strikes boost exp earned by 1.75 which i believe is the same was it 1.5 or is it 1.75? I can't remember. I think it might have been 1.75 before. Heals the crew by 2,000 at the end of the turn. And wait. Oh, hang on. Heals the crew by 2,000 at the end of the turn. Oh, so you just get extra healing too. Dude, this is even better. All right. That's pretty good. And then the special will now give you a two times orb boost for two turns and heal 5,000 HP at the end of the turn for two turns. I'm not going to say this is one of the most worthwhile ships to upgrade, but I am going to say this might be one of the, the most worthwhile ships to upgrade, and we haven't even looked at the special effects yet. Special effect number one improves to boost pirate EXP earned by 2x, a two times boosting EXP ship. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Special effect level two improves to double pirate EXP earned. Wait, that doesn't sound right. 
wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, that, that is definitely incorrect in game. Let me find the actual effect of that. That seems a little strange. Hold up. Okay, so the special effect level two is not another two times EXP on top of it, as much as I would love that to be the case. But honestly, it might be even better because it also provides an additional minus one cooldown at the start of the quest. So this ship at max level 12 with full boosts, minus two cooldown at the start of the quest, 1.65 attack, easier perfects, two times EXP, 2,000 heal per turn, and then a special that does a two times orb boost for two turns, and 5,000 heal for two turns. What the heck? This is, this is really good, and I am 100% leveling this ship up, 100%, which is starting tomorrow. The Ho ship is going to become, arguably, one of the best rainbow ships in the entire game. I cannot wait. So, lots to discuss in this video with the new level limit breaks and the new ships. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section. Which of the ships uh, have you most liked thus far? There's been a lot of good ones. As well as, what do you think of the brand new batch of level limit breaks? Very, very excited for these. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video. And if you guys did, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. And that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.